Hi right, guys and welcome to 123 MyOT's video on my latest mining rig build, the Gambler build. Ok guys, so I've been asked to build a mining rig for my friend Phil and uh, the reason why I've called it the Gambler is because he is a bit of a gambler, he likes to, he likes to bet or gamble on any, uh, any cryptocurrency that comes out and now he's going to start getting into some mining. So this build is very similar to my very first uh, mining rig build, which I did. You can check back through the uh, through the one two three my T video list and find that one. Now the difference in this build over my previous build was that Phil has opted to go for Nvidia over AMD, so he's got himself a GeForce GTX 1070 card, and with an overclock, we will get about 30 mega hashes out of that card. So this is going to be a good setup. It's going to be low power. We've got our Celeron CPU, he's opted for a Corsair RM1000i series which is a gold class power supply which you see there. We've gone for the Gigabyte motherboard again. He's gone for the 120 gigabyte SSD, nice and cheap, 8 gigabyte of RAM in case he wants to upgrade later to a, uh, to a gaming desktop. And we've got our switch over here to turn the rig on, we've also got ourselves a riser kit. So he brought a whole bunch of these um, and he will slowly add in uh, his 1070 cards to the rig when he can afford it. And last but not least, most important, we've got this rack, pre-built rack. So uh, let's get to it. Let's start setting it up. As always guys, we're going to start with the RAM first. So this is the 8 gigabyte uh, RAM which is it's a uh, DDR4 2400 and we're going to put the CPU and the RAM and uh, all the components on the motherboard first before we fit the motherboard into the case. So let's go ahead and get that one going. So we've just got to pull one side of the RAM off and just pop it in like so. You feel a bit of a click go through and then you'll, you'll see the, uh, the little switch or the little plug on the side will just lock in to the uh, RAM then you know it's in place. Next part here is the low power uh, it's a uh, Celeron processor it's the G3900 so we're going to lock that into the CPU spot there. Alright we're just going to unlock the CPU here drop it back the little lid there lifts off take our CPU out try not to get our fingers all over it if we can there's some little notches at the top of the CPU and a little arrow which kind of points you to uh, to the right direction here so you can only really put the CPU in one way I believe that's the way right there you drop this one down and you need to push the push the uh, lid back underneath the screw there and you'll feel that there's a bit of resistance now to pop it down and then the little top should just pop off like that next up here it's going to be the fan. Now the fan comes pre-loaded with the thermal paste. So we can just drop that straight on. The good thing about the these CPUs is they already come with a little fan. So you don't need to buy any extra cooling or quick kits or anything like that. So we're just going to match it up with the holes there. Push it down. Like so. And bang. She's ready to go. We've got our CPU fan. Four, four port plug which we're going to just plug into on the motherboard on the other side. It's right near the RAM there. Let's see if I can tilt it that way and give you a better look. There you go. Next up is our switch for our motherboard. This is to turn the motherboard off and on. Okay, so now we've done all that, it's time to attach the motherboard to our, our case. With, the, uh, with these pre-built cases, they come with all the, all the screws and nuts and bolts and things. So we're going to use these little ones here to uh, screw the motherboard into place in the case there. Okay guys, so you can see we've got the motherboard in place and she's screwed in pretty firmly there. You should always try and do a little mock-up uh, of your rig before you start putting components in place. As you can see here, the uh, graphics card that we're using is uh, on a bit of an angle there, so I'm going to have to take out this uh, beam here and just rise it a little bit so that it's flush uh, when, it, when, it, when it attaches to the case. But yeah, just do a little mock-up about where you're going to put things. Things that are important to note when you're putting them in, make sure you give yourself plenty of room with your cabling from the motherboard. So try and center the cabling uh, from the motherboard. 
and the same goes with your power supply so make sure your power supply can come out here into the center of your of your uh, case and you have enough room to supply power and things right along the the, the inside of the case there all right guys so phil's opted to go with the galax nvidia geforce gtx 1070 card and it's the i believe it's the x model ex model down the bottom there and we've attached it in now this these racks are designed kind of you, you your cards can pretty much sit there um there wasn't really much space to feed the cable tie um through the metal part here so just kind of put it up the top there and that's fine i mean as, as long as it doesn't move it should be fine but um at a later stage if he wants to move it all he needs to do is cut the cable tie here and just move the card along but I'm putting sitting it right at the edge um, because it's the first card so at a later stage as he buys more cards he'll just be able to kind of plot them along on the inside one other thing to mention guys is you'll find all these parts so motherboard RAM CPU everything in the description below all right so we got the sand disk SSD plus and that's 128 gigabytes SSD and that's going to be able to run Windows for us really quick now you don't need a lot of storage uh, for mining rigs so 120 is fine but uh, obviously if you get the faster one it runs Windows 10 a little bit better Windows 10 is not that great um, unless you do like all the updates and that you've got to have all the updates in Windows 10 and then it will run much better but if you leave any updates to be installed it It'll slow your rig right down and uh, slow your computer, even your laptops or whatever, it'll slow right down. So make sure you do your Windows updates. Um, we're just going to plug it in there, and then this is just going to plug it into our motherboard. I just realized the Corsair uh, power supply, this one down here, came with a whole heap of these little tiny uh, black um, cable ties or cable tidies. So I'm just going to pop it in there, and I'm going to tie that GTX uh, 1070 down properly. Alrighty, time to put the riser card in. So we've just gone for a standard Del Cheapo. Uh, you can get them off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. And uh, so it's a six pin one. And it goes from our SATA port. Buy them in bulk. So get six if you need six for your rig. Uh, this is obviously going to be a six, um, six GPU rig. Uh, when Phil gets some more uh, cards ready. But um, basically if you have troubles with these. You just swap them out. And then get a refund on the bad one that you have. How do you tell if you've got a bad riser? Your system won't boot properly or your cards, they'll have heaps of trouble detecting. You know, they might start up one time, uh, detect okay, then you restart it, doesn't detect the next time. So just try swapping these out until that problem goes. Also make sure that these lock in properly and that they're sitting on your card properly. And also make sure that this little riser um, circuit board at the bottom here sits flush into your board as well. So that can be another thing. Um, do all that, go through, check all your cards, restart your machine, and then hopefully you identify uh, which could be a faulty one. Last bit of troubleshooting as well is uh, try taking, try putting your cards in one at a time, start up the machine, get it running, and make sure that card's okay. Eventually you'll come to the, the one that doesn't boot the machine properly, and you can try just replacing the parts on that card or that on that GPU or that uh, riser card. Okay, so we've plugged in one end of our riser card in and we've taken the other one up to the card there now there's a little switch here as you can see it's a bit hard to see there from the camera I'll try and get a better camera angle on it um, but that little switch flicks across and locks your card into place first power cable we're going to plug in is the CPU power cable and it tells you on the side of the plug just there CPU a little bit hard to see and read but that goes into the motherboard over here and then we'll plug it directly into our power supply on the other side there Next one that we're going to plug in here is going to power our uh, little sand disk SSD. So we just plug it in like that. And we can just sit it on the bottom of the case there. It's not going to go anywhere unless you're like flipping the case over. So I don't even, you can, you can tie down the power supplies, but I don't even really bother tying them down. Unless you're going to be like moving them around a lot, which I would assume you're probably not. They're going to sit okay. They're heavy enough to sit okay in the bottom of the rack like that. Um, just going to plug the other end of the SSD into the six port pin on the power supply. And that'll give us power for our uh, SanDisk SSD. 
Alright, the thing with some of these graphics cards is this GTX 1070 actually needs two cables uh, to be powered. So you need a 6-pin and you need a 8-pin. Uh, and it won't actually boot unless you have both of these plugged in. So I will try, um, I will try first of all just with the 8-pin and with the riser card plugged in down the bottom there and see if it works. If that doesn't work then I'll try plugging in the 8-pin and the 6-pin to the top of the card. So you can see there that we've got the the one eight port pin plugged in, and then if we need to, we'll use this uh, this one here, this six pin, to go along with it. But we'll try it with just the eight pin first. Okay, guys. So the next step here is to plug in your riser card down the bottom. Now, I'm going to use just the standard uh, SATA uh, connection. Now, there's a lot of comments about people uh, saying that you shouldn't use uh, these connectors uh, for the bottom of the card. Um, I think the rule of thumb. Well, what I what I think the rule of thumb should be is don't use any more than two of these ports. If you look at this cable, it comes with four ports on it. One, two, three, and four. Um, I wouldn't use any more than two uh, two of these SATA ports to power these riser cards. Stick with the two, the standard two that come with the other PCIe cards. And uh, if you can, even reduce it further. Maybe just put one card. Uh, per once one one cable if you can so I'm going to go ahead and do that now okay so getting to the end of the power cabling so this is the motherboard power so this this is the cable that will power the motherboard so this end here goes into our, our power supply and this end here goes into the motherboard all right guys so she is just about ready to try plugging in the keyboard the monitor and uh, and uh, the mouse here and then we're going to try and install Windows. So let's just do a quick look around the bottom here. Now obviously we'll go through and tidy it up at a later stage. I think it's not too bad. There's only one card in here at this stage though, so there's not very many uh, cables around. Uh, but this rack is actually pretty good. It's a good size. It's not quite as big as the Kraken, which had uh, eight cards in there. If you want to see that, I'll put a link in the description. Um, but... Uh, this is going to be a really solid rig and it's going to earn a lot of cash. Okay, so we've got our power supply turned on, or plugged in at least. Now we're going to turn it on and we've also got our Ethernet cable, our VGA monitor and US USB uh, mouse and USB keyboard plugged in. And uh, I reckon we're pretty much ready to try firing up the computer. Let's see how we go. Alright, let's see how we go. Do I know what I'm doing or not? Seems like I don't. Okay guys, so rookie error, you've got to plug in the other end of the power supply before it will power up. So uh, I'll do that now. Also, there's uh, just mentioned this little switch on the, uh, on the power supplies. They're always pretty good, so if you're doing any work, just flick it off here, and that will stop the power going into the rest of your rig while you work on it, and then turn it back on when you're ready to go. Alright guys, third time lucky. So the problem here this time was the uh, reset switch. So this, uh, this switch only came with a reset switch, so i uh, plugged that into the power there now, and uh, we're going to give it another shot and see how we go. Oh, so. Guys, so I don't know if you can see that, but it says, please power down and connect the PCI power cables for this graphics card. So no, another little setback, but it means we're going to have to plug in probably this uh, second port that I mentioned earlier. So let's get that done now. Alright, so the other thing to mention here is I've had to actually plug in the uh, VGA into the uh, primary graphics card. So because this graphics card is plugged into the primary slot, just on the motherboard there, you, sometimes you need to try, if you're not getting anything on your screen, make make sure you try plugging directly into, uh, into your first graphics card, or any other graphics cards for that matter, until you get something displayed on the screen. So the next message we've got here guys is reboot and select proper boot device or insert boot media in selected boot device and press any key. So now it's asking for our Windows um, USB. So we're going to plug that into the port and we're going to boot into Windows and hopefully install Windows. Okay guys, so you can see there we've plugged in our Windows 10 Pro 64-bit USB. We're getting some action now, we're getting a bit closer. You can see there that we've got the gigabyte uh, display coming up which is a step in the right direction. Now if you need a copy of Windows 10 you can get it from the 123MyIT website. I've done a video on how you can get that and uh, I'll put a link in the description below. Okay guys so in the BIOS the uh, if you go into the chipset settings 
Um, just make sure your VD, VTD is enabled, internal graphics enabled, and your audio controller is uh, disabled. Next step, under peripherals, you want to go into mining mode, and that's disabled. We want to enable that. Initial display output, we want to make that IGFX port. Onboard land is fine. Uh, 4G decoding is fine, leave that on. Okay guys, once you've done those settings, just hit save and exit. All right, go through the Windows setup settings. Choose your language. English Australia, the best country in the world. Just kidding guys, from the US. Install now. Okay, so we've got it up and running now. We've got Windows installed and we've installed the latest NVIDIA drivers. Now, if you can see here, I'm running uh, Claymore's uh, Miner and we're getting about 29, 29.1 uh, mega hashes on the Ethereum and we're also along with that we're getting about 200 mega hashes uh, on Decreed so we're dual, dual mining at the moment and also over here you can see we've installed the MSI afterburner we've got a power limit of 65 we've got a core clock of plus 49 and a memory clock of 449 another thing I should mention too about Windows and Windows 10 there's, there's actually a lot of settings that you need to change before your rig will actually turn into a mining rig so if you don't change if you don't turn off things like windows updates it will restart in the middle of the night and uh, your um, your mining will stop so I'm gonna do a video at some stage that, that goes through all the settings for windows so basically to turn uh, windows 10 into a mining rig build and uh, I'll, I'll do a separate video for that because that's uh, quite uh, gonna be quite a long video okay guys so I managed to get the VGA cable working plugged directly into the motherboard so what this does is it allows us to um, just use the GPU just for processing uh, the uh, and doing the mining and it doesn't take any power away from from the from the GPU so okay guys so let's talk stats so if you go to what to mine this graphics card and this setup uh, will make you about three dollars a day now it can go up and can go down depending on the profitability of the coins that you're mining but at this stage this is uh, a rough estimate of what you'll get you know um, three dollars a day by 30 days is going to be ninety dollars for the month so the uh, purchase price in USD was one thousand one hundred and forty seven dollars and the purchase price in uh, Australian dollars was one thousand four hundred and forty nine dollars you're looking at a return on investment before power costs of about 12 months with this setup so the Nvidia cards are a lot more expensive uh, than the AMD cards so the return on investment is maybe a few months longer um, so that's obviously before power costs and but this also doesn't depend on the value of Ethereum or, or Decreed or whatever coin you're mining so if the pr price or the value of that coin goes skyrocket then the rig can essentially be paid off you know in a week okay guys so if you need any hardware that featured in this video I'll leave a link in the description below also if you have any feedback or comments please leave them in the comments field below and that's pretty much it from me guys if this was a helpful video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching guys, bye bye.